Here we're going to be showing how to set up crush, also called nip in English terms, on a bearing. This is the ability to set the bearing shell to a slightly larger diameter than the bearing cap, which is the bolted on piece, and the bearing saddle, which is the piece cast and machined into the crankcase. The crush involves setting the two shells. Here's one shell. Here we see inside the other shell and the two shims. These shims are in place to take up the kerf or the material that was removed when the saw cut the circular bearing apart. What we've done is made sure that all these bearings are perfectly flat and square after parting. And then what we're trying to do is set between three and six thousandths of crush and that varies by engine. We're setting a little more crush on an aluminum cap engine because it's got more expansion in it. And this means that the outside diameter of this shell all the way around has to be about three to six thousandths larger in diameter than the inside diameter of the saddle, which is what you see right here and the inside of the cap. So one circle, the inner circle, has to actually be bigger than the outer circle, which crushes everything together. One of the things critical to setting crush is that the bearing shell itself, both halves of it, must be perfectly square. These were sawed in half. You can see the steel versus the babbit. The babbit will be cut away to exactly fit the crankshaft. In this case, we also have oil grooves and this is a saddle bearing, it's not the oil-fed side. So this has to be perfectly square and true, otherwise our crush won't be accurate. So we're checking it on a flat plate and seeing that it comes into just a few tenths over zero and just a few tenths over zero. If you look at the two measurements, they are basically within a couple of tenths of each other, which is what we want. Crush. We start by, by making sure that our numbers are all lined up because these bearings have to go in the same orientation every single time. And from the time they're numbered to the time that the engine is final assembled, all the numbers have a special relationship. And they're numbered and marked in with Rolls-Royce numbering on the cap and crank. We're using a plastic hammer, dead blow, to just carefully seat the bearing. We see the number here, it orients to a number there. We have a number here, and we have a number here, all of which line up together so that they're all facing in the same orientation as the number stamped on the Rolls-Royce crankcase. Similarly, on the cap itself, we have a number here, and that, again, orients with the number right here. We can take all these bearings after they're numbered and put them in a box and shake them around and then pull the pieces out and they will go exactly where they need to because the numbering orientations are correctly set. This being aluminum, we keep a little bit of oil here to keep this from galling. This should be a very tight slip fit. And what we're now going to do is tap our cap down. The bearings actually have little um, locating pins in them, those have been elongated so the bearings can actually rock a small amount in their saddle. That means that when you go to set crush, that it's finding its center and it's finding its crush. So we're going to set the nuts on. Note the nuts have all been lapped into place and are a perfect, the perfect slide fit on. There's no burrs, there's nothing holding them up. We're going to tighten to 45 foot-pounds on each bearing. And then we're going to loosen one side. And when it loosens, the cap will open up because one, this inner part is bigger than this outer part. It will force these two apart. A little tap with a plastic hammer will spring things. The final step in confirming the crush is using feeler gauges. We have one, two, three thousandths, and also a four thou. And what we're going to do is make sure that we have equal amount of gap on either side of the 
shim. The shim will have no gap right here where it's in with the babbit, but at the cap side, what we want to see is that we have a nice three thou and a nice three thou. There we go, it's going in. On this side, we have the same thing above and below the bearing. But if we go to try and put a four thou in, we find that it is tight and will not enter. Same thing on the other side. It is not going to take a four thou, but it takes a three thou. And now what we're going to do is tighten this side up to our 45 pounds. Loosen this side. Same thing, use a little bit of uh, tapping to pop this side up. And we're going to take our feeler gauge again and we're going to make sure we have three thou three thou sliding in, three thou, and three thou, and then when we come back and try our four, that our four will not slide in. And that tells us that we have crush that is set to our correct dimension, and it proves that it's absolutely square because it's three thou and three thou, and it's not canted or off on either side. This bearing is now torqued back to our 45 pounds. And we write, okay, and move on to bearing number two. Just to give you some time on this, the Cutting and numbering and setting the rough setting the shims is about an hour to an hour and a half per bearing. Then they are rough cut back to the point where they have about 20 to 30 thou of crush. And then they are fine set to get this three thousandths of crush. Because this is an extra wide number one bearing versus the narrow uh, intermediate bearings, this takes a little longer, there's more material. But this one took about an hour and a half to set to the absolute final crush. Crush will be checked one more time right before the engine is put in the line bore. We'll actually leave this sit for about a week and see if anything settles out or stretches. And right before it goes in the line bore, it'll get checked and any final adjustments will be made. But now we'll move on to number two and go two through seven. It'll probably take about two solid days to do all seven bearings on a Phantom II.